That's uh, J Devil got here. Moore versus Jones, another one too. Left left tackle position. Yeah, see that. I think the biggest thing is, I I like Dan Moore. I, I really do, and I, I think that I think he's all right. Yeah, and then when I look at Braxton Jones, I mean, when I look at Brojic Jones, when I look at him, I think that the biggest thing is he's a great run blocker right now. I think we can say that, but as mm. far as technique. He had he he kind of has a long ways to go, so it's really depending on what we want to do as far as the scheme and like I said with training camp, looking at how Matt Canner want Matt Canner wants to run this offense because Dan Moore <laughs> right now, I'd say that he is a better pass protector than Broderick Jones because I look at some of the things that Broderick Jones struggles with and we look at you know he has the size he has the athleticism. Mm -hmm. But it's really some of those mental things and some of the technique things that Dan Moore, being a veteran now, has the edge over him in that regard. But when we say franchise left tackle, then I look at Broderick Jones as that guy who's going to develop and be that 10-year type of guy at left tackle for us. So it's it's really, really close. And I don't think enough people are talking about that battle. So that's a good question yeah. right there. But it's something I'm going to have to watch. And really how quickly – can Broderick Jones catch on and become a great pass protector? Like I said, I love him in the run game, but it's how quickly can he catch on for Kenny Pickett? To me, though, is there any rule? Is there any rush to start Jones? Though I'm kind of happy to, if Demo starts and he knows he's been playing what two years in a row. Uh, yeah, I don't, third I, year. I don't think it's a rush. I mean, he, he's a first round pick, so you know we have the fifth year option. We have all of that, and then also adding to that, we're probably going to once he gets better. He's going to be that franchise guy. We're going to extend him, hopefully, and everything. So <clears throat> it's no rush. I mean, what's, you know, a couple games compared to 10 years? So we want to get, yeah. get him as prepared as he can to get on the football field. So, like I said, I, I do like Dan Moore. I'm not rushing at all. Yeah, but the, the minute that Dan Moore makes one mistake, one mistake. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. going to see you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> just one, just one, like, one, you know, Mr. Simon or something or – his hand gets moved and then it gets beaten. And it's like, oh, Dan Moore sucks. And then actually, Brian, I actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they're going to start Dan Moore. I think as well throughout the seat, uh, the camp. They're going to start him, and then but if but if they start Jones, I'm fine. I just don't want to see Jones go into this the week one, and he be might, might be the reason that that the, the Niners you know take advantage of a rookie. And I, I know I know that he's a good player, a skillful player. But to me, it's like it's his first game, Heinz Field. It's the 49ers defense. Dan Moore's been doing that now for two years. He's got the experience. I, I would go with a more of an experienced guy first because you don't want to see like Jones get the confidence, you know, beat out of him. That that's just my take anyway. But I think Dan Moore's going to win it. And then, like you said, Dan Moore can be there for now and Jones in the future. Yeah, hey, I, I think that's a really good point you made about confidence because, I mean, I think of some of the offensive line we've seen taken very highly and. I think about Evan Neal, the, the tackle who got drafted for the Giants, and how he was that draft pick out of Alabama, drafted him very early, but he struggled. And I think that we don't have to watch Broderick Jones struggle because, like you said, we have a guy in Dan Moore. So now, week one, we're going against a very good pass rushing team in San Francisco. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem if we start Dan Moore in that game. And just looking at how he's been with the team, he's been in this scheme, and he, like I said, he's a little further ahead in pass protection. So that that type of thing that I'm looking at and watching. But as far as when Broderick Jones will be ready, you like you said, Dan Moore makes one mistake, and a lot of people are saying we want to see Broderick Jones throw oh, yeah. him again and all that. Right, but then, but then I think adding to that. When we throw in Broderick Jones, he makes three mistakes, and so now we're saying, "What do we do at tackle?" So, it's well, they'll say, they'll say, "Bring back Dan Moore." That's what yeah, happens, so, you know. Yeah, um, so to I, me, to me, it's just a more of the experience, right? Dan Moore's been there two years, and if you know, he knows more of the playbook, and he's more ready for that position to go into Week One to be the left the starter. And I think that he's going to uh, carve out that role. Whereas Jones is still learning, um, as you know, even Kenny said. Kenny said last year, the rookie. The rookie year was different from this year being the second year you have more time because they're going through all the combines and all that stuff. They're, they're getting um, they're going for the draft. It's really exciting. Do you really want Jones to start uh, start the, the left tackle and be a lot of pressure on him? Or do you go with a guy who knows what to do for this offense? I more say if, if they win the battle, if Dan Moore wins the battle, you go with Dan Moore. Like you bring back this whole idea of social media of like instant gratification. There used to be times that there was no internet and you had to wait six. You had to wait six months until you knew I was on the team, right? And for me, watching when I was younger, 
You just went with the guys on the field. But now we're like, oh, we want Jones. We want Jones. We want Jones. The minute we make a mistake. But I trust the coaches. I think we're going to go with Dan Moore. If they don't, though, and Jones wins, then fine. You have a great backup in Dan Moore. But I think Dan Moore's going to fight. I think he's going to fight. Yeah, I think. I mean, because we, we, it, it's no, it's no, you know, hiding from the fact. We go against San Francisco. They're going to put Nick Bosa and say, go kill Roger Jones. That's the mindset going to be for the 49ers. And is that really a position you want to put your franchise rookie in? Because, I mean, it, it's really kind of awkward thing, an awkward thing to say, but confidence has killed a lot of great players, and they've never, they've never been able to fully shake back into the talented player that they are because we see how they've struggled early on. I think about quarterbacks in different positions and we see the most talented guy in college come over, struggle early because different coaches and different things going on. And then they never become that player we saw. So like I said, I'm willing to take it. If Dan Moore wins the job in training camp, like I said, it's still a battle still has to happen, but if he does, then I'm fine with it. Who's the, uh, that rookie quarterback that's um, got thrown on the bus uh, the most recent one, I can't remember his name. Uh, it's not Sam Darnold. There's another one too. But you're right. They they put him they put him into a into a show and they say go and start. And the next minute, the confidence goes haywire. See you later. I just think yeah, this is what Jed Duffer says too, right? It's all on how ready the rookie year. I still feel like Dan Moore has a lot to show. And I think that's what we forget. Like yeah. Dan Moore's still a player. Yes, yes. I think he was third round, fourth round. Um, he can make mistakes. Everyone can make mistakes. But I just feel like if he to me, if I was a coach and I was going to choose between, between two. I'd say, who knows the offense better? Okay, you know the offense better. You're going out there. You're going out there. You've, you've actually been in the stadium. You've played a game. You know, all those kind of things, like the, the excitement levels. You know how to, um, you know, re- retain that and, and, and focus on the game. Whereas, you know, if you start Jones, it's just, it's just his very, very first game. So why not, why not, like, bleed him into the action and start him later on the year or give him reps at certain places or even start him after the bar or something like that? I don't know. I just, I just feel like, Dan Moore, if, 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 if whoever wins the battle, I'm going to agree with. But if Dan Moore wins, still a nation, it's okay. Don't worry about him making mistakes because they, they got uh, Jones there for the future. But that is one that is one big battle I think everyone's going to talk about, that being left tackle. Um, do you think there's a chance, though, that I've also heard the ideas, too, that Jones starts left and Dan Moore goes to the right? Is that, is that, a, is that a possibility? Um. I think if any, if, if it were to me, if anything, I would flip that and keep them or, you know, on the left and then put Broderick Jones at the right. But really, the way the NFL is going, I mean, it's, it's pass rushers everywhere. So, you know, we think about the older NFL and usually the right tackle was the guy who wasn't as good of a pass protector as the left tackle. But I mean, now edge rushers are everywhere so you go left you go right either the edge rush is gonna follow you or they have another one on the other side who's just as good so i think that it it depends and being with roger jones he's played left tackle so i really wouldn't see how much benefit how much would it benefit him to go to right tackle because i mean i want to keep him there let him get comfortable there because it is a difference in playing left and right tackle so that would kind of just throw everything off for me Mm. The guy, the guy I was thinking of was uh, Josh Rosen. That he got, you know, thrown into the fire. I'm not saying he's the best quarterback, but same thing. Got thrown in the fire. His Curie went. See you later. 